Good day everyone, welcome back to Nat's Knackers Yard. I'll be Nat, this will be my Knackers Yard. This will be a bit of a cock up. Um, I am a massive penis, and there's a subtle difference there between having a massive penis and being one, and I am definitely one. Um, for those that saw my last upload, uh, which I did as a short, because I'm busy over the weekend, more of that later, um, what I realised was that I had mounted the gear selector upside down so you can just make out the uh, 4H7 written there I am 180 degrees out and it, it's my own stupid fault for not treble checking treble? treble checking um, uh, with all the inverting the, the engine to put things on and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards I just fucked it up and put it the wrong way up. Now I had a look in the book and there was nothing to tell you which way around that goes. What I should have done is defaulted on looking back at my upload and seeing which way it was before, but I didn't. And the reason why it needs to be that way up is that little notch at the top there, which should be at the bottom, represents neutral, and this little runner wheel underneath. Uh, effectively, as I understand it, springs and holds it. Um, uh, it needs to be sat in that divot. <coughs> so what? It's all the way out again. So it's off, off, uh, sump off, filter off, undo, <whistles> off, turn the fucking thing around and put it all back together again. Now I'm not going to sit here and film all of that, but I will dip um, in and out of it. Um, what else what else so the bits that went wrong or the bit that stopped me before from my last upload was feeling that start to yield and I was incredibly lucky incredible well, I wasn't lucky I was superbly skillful uh, in noticing it yielding now I you can feel when a bolt starts to yield uh, and I had the the rare occasion of good sense to stop now what it has done in this whole unfortunate incident has taught me a valuable lesson taught me several valuable lessons actually and I thought I'd pass them on one check check and check again uh, and don't be stupid um, the second one is I've needed to replace obviously the knackered one um, my thought process was if it, it's a critical part it's the drive for going onto the shaft drive um, so don't fuck around and don't do cheap so I've actually bought OEM stuff uh, so this is from Fowler's and it was here within days, within I think two days, three days of the order. Um, and all of this little bundle that I'll run you through was I think £19.70, something similar. So, you know, it's not ridiculous, it's not prohibitively expensive. And I don't normally do OEM parts, but I will from now on. So I've got four to replace, so rather than just replace the one, it seemed daft not to replace the lot. So that's precisely what I've done. I've also picked up... Uh, the bolt that I've lost somewhere, 39. Uh, I have also, I did reuse, which was a bit daft, parts that it said to replace. So, holding in the main drive, the pinned ones that it says to replace that I put back in. I wasn't happy with doing that. So, I've got four replacements so I can do that properly. And I've also, while I was thinking of it, got fresh clips for the pistons which I was just going to reuse the ones that I've taken out which is not a good idea and for the sake of pennies um, I've got replacements there so lesson learned by OEM lesson learned twice I'm currently in a fight with a Chinese supplier for the stator uh, that they claim has been posted twice. I've been waiting now two and a half weeks. They've got UK warehouses, so um, it should only be three days. Uh, they've claimed they posted it twice. I've still not seen it, and uh, I'm just now in a battle with them um, over getting my money back um, or a fucking stator. Uh, I have reordered, and I've ordered from a UK supplier. It cost me more money, but I just 
I need to get it back on the road. Um, I've also got a replacement um, uh, brake switch, rear brake switch. So, you know, a couple of uploads ago, I think, I did do a massive bodge just to see if I could. I ordered this at the same time. Again, cheap as chips, why, why wouldn't you? So, I'm going to get on with this. And uh, while I start it, at least, uh, I regale some, some stories of the weekend. <laughs> So just while I start to strip this bad boy back down um, and hopefully by the end of this upload I'm back in the same position, uh, we shall see. Um, Eurovision. Why? Why did you go to that, Nat? You're straight, aren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you don't have to be uh, female, gay or both to go to uh, Eurovision, uh, but it helps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know what is it uh, for, for those non-Europeans and non-Brits watching Eurovision Song Contest it's been going for years and years and years it's um, basically a European popularity contest <laughs> and the UK UT routinely does badly out of it, it did very badly uh, out of this one um, last year it was won by the Ukraine and obviously um, due to the current uh, ongoing conflict with between Ukraine and Russia the invasion um, obviously they couldn't host it now the UK came second last year which is unheard of um, so uh, uh, we ended up taking on the hosting responsibilities which is fine um, my good lady is a massive Eurovision fan massive and has been for years um, so by proxy um, haven't been married for a side of 20 years um, uh, I, I'm a fan by proxy. Um, I'm a fan. It's a great excuse for a good party. Um, and we've had a few good Eurovision house parties and various drinking games uh, throughout. And when it came to have the opportunity to go, we leapt at it with a bunch of friends. Didn't get tickets to start with because it's fucking really hard to get tickets and eventually... God knows how my wife got lucky and we got seated tickets. And I'll chuck up a few pics there. Um, it was a phenomenal night. Um, so stopped short on uh, on the Friday. Uh, yeah, stopped short on the Friday. A little cheapy, a little cheapy youth hostel actually. Um, on the night before, a little trip in. You know, it's about a three and a half hour trip to um, to. Uh, Liverpool from uh, uh, where we are just outside of Watford um, so long old days journey oh, as well as me when I find it I oh, know that was one of the that was one of the knacked ones um, so yeah uh, went up with sister-in-law and, and, and a mate uh, they went in the afternoon rehearsal we went on the grand final on Friday um, just a surreal experience, really funny, very, very, very camp. Um, uh, and if you're right with that, it's fine. If, if you're not, don't, because um, it will get to you. But it is just fucking hilarious. One story, just one story from it. Um, I spent, uh, so, I spent, so during the night I needed a pee, uh, drinking lots of booze, because it's the only way I can get through these things. And uh, went to the loo's, the loos there were, you know, like in like any football stadium, the gents were um, a load of your rhinos and about three or four uh, cubicles. And um, I went for a pee, did what I needed to do, um, uh, washed my hands, was about to leave, walked past the queue of cub cubicles, and at the front of the queue was a fucking massive guy. Like, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm 6'2", he had a good couple of inches height on me, and a good fucking 18 inches across the shoulder. Uh, guy came out of the cubicle, he went to go in, reached back and went, ah, oh, fuck. Now, he was wearing a, like a day glow pink with yellow flowers, all in one jumpsuit thing. And he went, ah, oh, fuck, I couldn't get out of it. <laughs> So I was walking behind him, so I went, I got you, mate. Grabbed the zip, pulled it down the back, and um, and he, he turned around and said, oh, thank you, sweetie. And I, I laughed and said, oh, that's a, that's a first for me. I've never been called sweetie in a gent's toilets before. And the guy behind me just <laughs> leant across and said, well, the night is young. <laughs> fucking cracked me up. 
I walked out of the toilets absolutely cracking up with laughter. Um, a brilliant experience, just just funny as fuck. Um, great atmosphere. I saw an update from the uh, uh, from the Liverpool police saying, you know, over the, the entire, I think, nine days worth, um, there were only three arrests for, you know, anything to do with Eurovision, you know, drink, drugs, etc., etc. Um, now there's an endorsement of a of a fantastic um, uh, atmosphere. Um, just, just phenomenal. Um, anyway, I've got shitloads of stories, and I'm not going to go into them. I need to get on with this, so I'll probably just fast forward you as I start to try and dismantle my good work and get myself back to a good position. Next. Right, so I thought I'd drop you back in on a bit of a hope, really, as much as anything else. Now. Um, that's the selector drum, so I'm sorry, I've taken the sump off. Uh, what else have I taken off? Gear selector, taken out the uh, the main drive link as well. Um, two halves are still together, I haven't loosened anything. I thought I'd have a look on a bit of a hope. Now that's the gear change drum. So by changing the gears, you know that, well, the gear pedal goes onto that if you like, trying to put it in as simpler terms as I can understand, uh, which then rotates this, which then pushes the selector forks and adjusts all the gears. Now, there is a pin that goes in there that I've removed that kind of locks it in place and the neutral switch uh, as well that I've whipped out. Um, now, I was just kind of hoping that I might be able to do it from the bottom and just spin it, but I can't because it's just catching on the it's not catching on, that's what they're designed to do. It's trying to move the the, uh, the uh, forks, uh, the forks, yeah, no, I do call them forks, um, uh, the forks onto it. So, no joy, I am going to have to split it, which I knew anyway, but ho hum, let's get on with it. Stop the fucking press. Um, just as I was pissing around there, in fact, I've got a little stand here, let me, let me see if I can... Uh, show you. Oh look at that, that's not a bad shot. Fuck me. Um, just as I was fucking around then saying, oh it's not going to move because it's trying to move the gears, I thought I'd turn the shaft. And it's now, <laughs> it's now the right fucking way up. It's spun all the way. So, I was just arsing around and I got a full rotation out of it. Which I am flabbergasted by. So I might not have to strip it complete. Right, fuck this. I'm going to put the pin back in. I'm going to put the neutral switch back in. Sorry, let's do it where you can see. Put the dowel pin back in. which is locking it at the right way up with the double lock at the bottom. I'm going to secure that, put the neutral switch back on. Not bother with the sump for the moment, just drop it back down, put the gear selector back in and see whether or not it will then select all the gears. I might have pulled off a fucking ripper. Right, I think we have some success and I just want to try and walk you through my thought process and just to highlight the fact I really don't know what I'm doing, but there's some logic here. So uh, I'm turning the main shaft. Now the main shaft is um, what the plates and the clutch um, uh, operates, um, uh, operates into. And there's a link all the way up to, you can see the edge of the teeth there, which takes you to... Um, essentially engaging the pistons and the pistons engage sorry no wrong way around actually the pistons uh, driving the uh, wheel let's put it on let's go nice and simple on the back wheel so I've got the selector down it's got the double lug uh, underneath that it's set in now which I believe to be neutral um, and I've had a bit of a play, and I think I'm nearly there with my with with my brain, if nothing else. So, 
if I'm spinning, if I'm mocking being driven by the pistons with my left hand. Um, so that's now engaged and it is engaged. You can see a slight movement in the wheel that essentially then goes through and out into the shaft drive. So I'm spinning it, but a little bit of pressure, it's not going anywhere. If I go, I keep spinning it. If I go down one, which would be first, and I get movement. Huzzah. I go up, back in neutral. I'm now in second. Third, it's getting harder to turn. Oh. And I'm in top gear. I'm still at the lights. Oh, gone down in first. <laughs> it's just like I'm gone to the lights and I'm back and it's not moving. I have gears, fucking yes. Uh, and I'm so excited I keep forgetting my words while I'm doing this. Um, right, I'm going to get that sump back on. Basically get back to roughly where I was at the beginning of the day. <laughs> right, and it's been, well, it's only a couple of hours or so actually. Uh, and I'm back where I was to start with, except I've now got um, uh, torqued in bolts. They're the new OEM ones. Um, uh, I've replaced 39. I've replaced, put one in 39. Uh, that I seem to have lost somewhere and the full piece is in and it works uh, I can't really that's neutral where it gets a slight yeah, slight movement that I can hold it with my finger it's not driving and it turns um, yeah all in all a little bit of a well, it's not a little bit. It's a fucking massive bonus for me. I was expecting, and you may have guessed from the tone of my voice uh, at the beginning, um, I was expecting to have to strip it in half again. Um, I was acting... Was I looking forward to that? No, Christ, no, I wasn't. Um, uh, I'd end up damaging paint, etc., etc. But um, I was quite intrigued to see how much spread I've got out of my sealant. Um, I haven't got much over bleed, uh, which I'm quite chuffed with, uh, but... Does that mean I haven't put enough on? I don't know. I'm probably not going to know until it's full of oil uh, and running. It's all going to be a bit late by that point. Um, no, nope, happy. <sighs> That'll do me. Um, I'm back where I was. <laughs> um, what, best side of a week ago. Um, but I'm now happy to move on. I'm just debating whether or not... I mean, it said I want to follow the book. The book says put the clutch in. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I want to yet. Um, I might just put the basket in and leave out the plates for now because uh, you know I've got a lot to do uh, and leaving plates to dry in a bike while I'm pissing around just seems a little bit a little bit daft. Uh, although what I could do now I, I think I might just put the basket in, uh, go for the basket, get that in and secure. So at least I can check that um, that. I can check the drive as much as anything else that the pistons move uh, in, in nice simple nat language because that's really um, as complicated as I get um, yeah we're getting there people right that'll do me for a wanna catch later on ta -da. and I'm back and I'm back because a comedy interlude because I've realised I've done something really daft no big no worry and I haven't snapped anything. Um, I haven't realised I've put the clutch in upside down, or the selector upside down. I thought I'd lost a bolt and I've replaced it. And I was just looking at it. No, I haven't. I put it in there. That, those two, for the starter motor. <laughs> oh, you dickhead net. Um, no, I've got a spare bolt. I hadn't lost one. Yes, my anal organisation worked. Um, it just didn't account for the fact that I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Cheers all. Ta-da.